any anthropologist, anybody who studies history, anybody who looks at how European societies migrated and, and interacted with one another, the kind of intercultural communication that existed between different religions, different belief systems, different ethnic groups, whatever kind of category you want to say that, uh, you know, frame that in. There was a lot of crossing. There was no like provincial little white race, you know, society that existed at any point in human history. And yet we tend to project these ideas onto the past. And that, that to me is what's so kind of, um, a disturbing aspect of it. Uh, not, not, of course there's, there's a lot of disturbing aspects of it, but that to me seems like a really disturbing quality of it, which is this, this kind of almost, I don't know if it's robust or not, but it's a real thick ideology that sort of bleeds out of this. You know what I mean? Like white people have always been great. Why doesn't anyone see that? And we have to protect that. I have to do whatever I can at any cost to protect the white race from being infiltrated by these aliens, by these other people. And it just has always been, to me, really a ridiculous cause concept. And it's in, and that's where the whole identity thing comes in that really bothers me is like, um, it's so based on a, a fragile thing. It, it, to me, the white identity f- feels so fragile. And anytime it feels threatened, all these acts of violence emerge out of it. And it just, it's, it's disturbing to me. Uh, I don't know. There's just kind of a rant, but I don't know if there's a question in there for you, but it's just, it, it, it gets me going because I think about just the very premise of what it's built on is so faulty, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think, I think something here is that a real internalization of a settler colonialist myth about what whiteness is and about what whiteness has meant. So this idea that white people are disappearing uh, it takes a very, very narrow view of itself. So, for example, the, the idea that that white people are disappearing is really an issue of skin color, like the actual pigmentation of it. There's going to be fewer people with a certain level of lightness in their skin. Now, we all know skin comes at a gradient. I don't know what point it becomes white um, or at what point it stops being white. But the point here is that when they say the decline of white people, it really is about a number of people with a very, very specific phenotype. But the problem with that is that the genes themselves that go into whatever they think the construct of these people is don't disappear. They progress. They build new communities. They go on. Names change. Peoples change. That's just the story of human beings. And so this notion that something that is totally artificial, that even when you get down to the core of it, has to be a socially constructed tribal identity is latched onto with such vigor as if it's a scientific fact and the reality of it uh, determines whether or not we have successful lives and we'll have futures. It's a really bizarre notion. And to, to the, the fact that we continue to prop up a history that, that Europe's history was, you know, um, monoracial, that, um, that the Europeans had some legitimacy to land and things like that. As long as we continue to make that the central narrative, we're going to continue to allow an identity that's wholly toxic to foster and build up. And there's really nothing positive about this core white identity that exists. Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just, yeah. I, I, well, I guess maybe in my meandering rant that there before was, I guess what I was trying to get at was that white anxiety that we see in, white communities in general, if you want to call them white communities or predominantly white um, settlements or, or neighborhoods or cities or whatever it is, right? This sense that they're being invaded and that this is a response to late capitalism. But my, my I guess my thing was, is that you mentioned this in your piece with, with, uh, you know, with Alexander Reed Ross, which is the, yes, th- what happened in New Zealand and what happens seemingly now all over the world with these white supremacists um, committing acts of terror is that that's an extreme, as an extreme expression of a sentiment that is actually felt in pretty non extreme environments, if that makes sense. Like white people, and I'm, I, I know I, this, this is a huge generalization, white people, right? That's kind of a part of the problem to some degree, but this general white identity that maybe white people feel, whether they consciously analyze it or not, um, it's prevalent all over the, at least I could speak as an American, it seems like I see it all over the United States. Um, uh, I think the sense that, and it, it definitely is present within, I think, many of the 
the fans of Donald Trump, um, especially. Um, but this sort of white anxiety, white anxiety. Yeah. It just seems like it gives a, almost a center to allow for these types of actions to emerge in the first place. If that makes any sense at all. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think in a way that identity is what is grappled with because it's what they have. Um, so you mentioned being at a, a point of late capitalism, And I think it's really important to kind of think about what that means. We're talking about climate collapse, just total collapse. We're talking about an economic system that is literally breaking apart at the seams. Um, Even while people live reasonably comfortable lives in a lot of like global northern first world countries, there is an incredible anxiety that grows in people, both from the discontent from their lives. You know, people work shitty jobs, have shitty relationships, um, uh, don't have strong communities, all those sorts of things. And at the same time, don't have any guarantees about who they're going to be in the future. Um, Whiteness is there. Uh, Whiteness is a language they're fluent in. Um, And it's it's really hard to then present a revolutionary alternative and say, you know, that whiteness also is actually holding you back. It's also um, actually a toxic falsehood. Um, And so I think as we're seeing a shift in politics away from what what has sometimes been called soft power, the power of negotiation, of values, influencing decisions, of negotiation, things like that, to a place of, of really hard power in a lot of ways where people, um, parties, political parties, political actors, and so on, kind of battle for hegemony in a certain way. We're seeing the rise of a far right um, sometimes fully white nationalism, sometimes more of like an undercurrent of nativism, like you were mentioning. Um, that's here to stay because it's feeding on a general change in society away from a perceived stability. Um, and that anxiety only grows. Um, I think that that people who have, a uh, a, a left alternative to that or a revolutionary alternative to that have a lot to offer in that realm. But the contention with white supremacy is massive. And it's not as though I think there's an easy solution to confront those sorts of things either. 